Hello and welcome to All Things Rift Episode 3. Today I'll be talking about exploration and mounts, but first, the news. Patch 1.1 is on its way and with it is coming a shiny new world event, the River of Souls. Now, over at Rift Games forums, uh, Elrar posts the following very dramatic description. The River of Souls reeks with the foul stench of death. Alsbeth the Discordant, Bride of Regulus, sows her evil will into the soul stream that binds Talara with the afterlife. Dark magic corrupts the spirits within, transforming them into lifeless husks, eager to serve the devourer. Alsbeth is determined to crush Talara under the tread of the endless court and tear down the ward to make way for a massive invasion. It now falls to you, Ascended, to beat back the darkness before the world is snuffed out. Now, Elrar also promises, quote, a host of changes, unquote. Now, unfortunately, I was unable to attend the event on the Alpha server, so I have no first-hand knowledge of what went down. What I am really excited about, though, even more than this particular event, which sounds pretty cool, is that we are one month into this game, and already Tryon is giving us new and dynamic content to play with. We all know that Tryon wanted their game to be much more dynamic than what is typical, but I think many of us thought that Tryon believed Rifts alone would accomplish this, and we might have been a little skeptical. Now, it's starting to become clear that Tryon's idea of dynamic world events goes way beyond the norm, and depending on how they handle it, we players might actually have a truly ever-changing world on our hands, which would be a huge breath of fresh air in the MMO market. And elsewhere on the interwebs, gaming blogs were all abuzz on Wednesday after Sci-Fi Network released its program lineup for 2011, which evidently stated that the joint effort between Sci-Fi and Tryon Worlds is entitled Defiance. Now, Sci-Fi pulled this slip of information shortly after the release, and the series is officially unnamed once again. But here's what we know. Sci-Fi and Tryon are producing a game that corresponds with a TV series. Tryon calls the game a massively multiplayer action role-playing game. The series and game are evidently scheduled to be released in 2011, although I honestly find the game portion of that release rather difficult to believe unless we're talking about the tail end of December. Now, I think the whole idea sounds pretty cool, but honestly, this is more of something that I'm curious about than actually looking forward to. Uh, look, most TV shows are pretty bad, and most of them are off the air in a year. Most MMOs are bad, and most MMOs are off the market in a year. And trying to do both together and make both aspects of the project successful sounds to me like the impossible task. But then, I am a pessimist. So, for a much more optimistic viewpoint, check out the video at tryonworlds.com. Now, I was very happy to find a new interview with executive producer Scott Hartsman over at obsoletegamer.com, and then I saw the first question. Quote, Will you offer endgame content at the time of release, and if so, can you tell us a bit about it? Unquote. Yep. The entire interview was given prior to launch, and ObsoleteGamer.com published it this week, thus living up to their name. Now, despite Obsolete Gamer allowing this interview to fully ripen before releasing it to the public, there is at least one nugget of good information here. When asked if Tryon wants to include an in-game marketplace for vanity items, Scott says, quote, Right now, we're 100% focused on making the rift that is out there as good as it possibly can be via constant content and feature updates. New types of in-game store functionality isn't something that's really on our radar for the moment. If enough people like the idea, it could be something we talk about in the future. Unquote. Now, despite leaving this possibility open in his answer, based on his comments here and elsewhere, I think it's safe to say that we won't be seeing a cash shop anytime soon, if ever, in Rift. Scott also says, quote, The only store-type conversations we've had lately have been around working out a path to hardware authentication devices and other merchandise like hats and t-shirts, unquote. 
Now in his more recent interview a week ago with Massively, Scott says they are only working on text and cell phone authentication, so my assumption is that the hardware authenticator idea has been scrapped. And in the I totally dropped the ball last week section, Crossover Games last week released version 10.1, which now supports Rift. If you run Linux or a Mac without Windows, you can check out Crossover Games at CodeWeavers.com for more information on how they can get you up and running in Rift. Moving on to exploration. Now, I'm standing here on the bridge between Stonefield and Scarlet Gorge. Now, if you are not exploring off the beat and path in Rift, uh, you're really missing out. That's a kind of a crucial part of the game where most games don't really want you necessarily to explore a whole lot. Rift really encourages it. By the way, this is a great opportunity for me to give a shout out to Fraps. This is actually the first game footage that I've re recorded in Fraps, and I think it's a huge improvement over what I was using. So thanks to everyone who recommended Fraps. Now, uh, this is a mountain. In most games, a mountainside like this, you wouldn't be able to climb up. Uh, and if you could, you'd end up coming to a place where the graphics are all bad and sloppy because they really didn't intend you to. Not so, for the most part, in Rift. They want you to go out and explore, and, and there's a particular way to get up here. Uh, you can't just climb up this mountainside anywhere. You kind of have to take the path that I'm, that I'm taking. And as you can see, you kind of have to try and try again sometimes. Um, but once I get to the top here, I will be rewarded for my efforts here at this ancient cairn. And I open it up and find out my inventory is full. So bear with me for just a moment here and I'll be taking care of my inventory by you know, placing some of these uh, artifacts that I have here. And then we'll get to see what's in this dusty sack. I have a feeling it'll be something good just because I took the time out to look around. All right, and there we go. I get a blue drop, which isn't doing me any good since it's uh, plus 11 endurance, but it's still blue. It might sell for something, and I also got a nice chunk of gold. Now, that's not all that's up here. Um, actually, there's a puzzle that I'm coming to here. The zones have puzzles that you need to find and then solve. When you solve the puzzles, you get you get a class-specific drop. I'll get another blue drop, another big chunk of gold. I'll also earn an achievement for solving this puzzle. I could show you how to solve it, but then I'd have to kill you. So uh, there's also a lot more to explore up here. Um, generally speaking, when you go off the beaten path, you might see some, some pretty cool stuff. You're also most likely going to find some artifacts for your efforts and artifacts can be valuable. You can get lots of cool stuff for your artifacts. Up here I can come to the top of the falls, overlooking Granite Falls, and get a nice unique view. There's an artifact there. And so exploring, definitely worth the time. Here's another smaller example. Here I am outside of Lantern Hook. This is kind of Rift's version of an indoor-outdoor mall. Um, and now a lantern hook is just in this big rock thing, which, uh, again, you wouldn't expect necessarily to be able to climb it, uh, but here I am, and I'm, I'm just going to give it a shot here. It couldn't go that way. No, I can't go that way. Can't go that way. And there we go. I can go that way. So up I go. Up, 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 up. Uh-oh. I got stuck again. Uh, moving over, and there we go. Now, up at the top of Lantern Hook, there's not a whole lot, especially when it's dark like this. Not a lot to see. But there are some artifacts. So once again, I'm at least rewarded for my efforts here with some artifacts. And there's going to be another one over here, I have a feeling. So exploring, a very big part of Rift. It's a lot of fun, and you can get rewarded for your efforts. And now we move on to mounts. Peter R2K9 wrote in this week and says, Thanks for the videos, but can you maybe make one on mounts and how to get them? I'm very interested and a bit of a mount junkie. Well, thanks, Peter. 
First off, we have here, this is the Tardagon mount. You can get this with uh, the Collector's Edition. There's also a level 50 version that you can get from the Artifact Vendor. Um, this is Meridian. I would just like to make a mention here that I am working feverishly on a Defiance leveling guide, so my videos right now are a bit skewed Defiant, well, a lot skewed Defiant. In May, as I work on the Guardian guide, that will not so much be the case. Now, I'm talking to Shreya Turk here, and she is a mount vendor, and she sells these, um, they're kind of these gazelle-looking things, and then also these mechanical mounts. She sells both the regular one that you can get at low levels. Uh, you can get them as soon as you ha can afford them. You don't have to wait for any particular level. Um, she also sells the level 40 version and the level 50 version. Um, and these are just for money. That's You don't have to do anything for these except to be able to afford them. And you can see the different kinds of mounts here. Now, here I am in the northwest of Free March, right here by Kalari Refuge, and I can talk to Oribus Vend, who is also a mount seller. He sells these chestnut horse bridles. This is also a low-level mount, uh, of course, the chocolate and the bay horse. He also sells the Swift Copper Armored War Horse and Swift Silver Armored War Horse. Swift Armored War Horses, these don't cost as much as the ones in Meridian. Uh, they do require, though, uh, honored reputation with the Free March Wardens, which you can get by doing the quests in Free March and also by doing uh, the dungeon here in Free March. Uh, that'll get you that reputation. Um, now, I got myself this Swift Silver Armored War Horse Bridle, and I was the first person on the server to do so. Yay! Now, here I am outside the Chancel of Labors in Iron Pine Peak. I'm talking to Breeder Brannock, and he sells these level 50 mounts. That's all he sells is the level 50 mounts, the Yarnersaur, and you need to have a reputation with uh, Ice Watch, and I'm not sure how to get that reputation any glorified. Not sure what the easiest way to do that is, but these are some pretty cool mounts, and I imagine at the moment probably pretty rare in the game, as I doubt that very many people have gotten the rep required. Now here I am on the road that goes between Stillmore and Iron Pine Peak, and I'm just going to be talking to Irislav Gogol here. He sells Najmuks. And he sells the level 40 and the level 50 version. For the level 40s, you need uh, Order of Mathos reputation. You need to be decorated. That's pretty easy to get. You just need to do the quests here in Stillmore. Um, now, for the level 50, you need to be glorified with Order of Mathos. And I'm not even close to that and not quite sure how you go about getting that at this point or what the easiest way is. Um, but these are some really cool mounts. These great big giant gorilla-looking things with horns. And they're also quiet mounts, which is really nice, so you don't have a lot of clipping and clopping and clanking and stuff when you ride, which I like. Now, I purchased the Nimble Forest Najmuk, and once again, this was a server for... Does my butt look big in this dress? I'm just asking. All right, well, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.